Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Now if you've been to the website before, you've seen my English friend Jeremy Hart. Jeremy is kind of our European correspondent. He gets to do a lot of the stuff in Europe I don't get to do. Uh, he went to India for the Tata Nano. He was with me when we went to the Jag factory that was really fascinating. Well this time he's done something really cool. He got together with Land Rover and he drove cross country here in the United States. Now I know it doesn't sound like a big deal. A lot of people drive cross country, but he did it only on dirt roads because Land Rovers are off-road vehicles and they didn't want to be on paved roads at all. And you can still do it. You can still drive from one coast all the way to Oregon without ever being on a paved road. It's a fascinating journey. Hope you like it. Take a look. Well, crossing America these days is all about freeways and fast food. But there is a more adventurous way to cross the USA, and that's on dirt. It's the most developed country on the planet. But America is still crisscrossed by a network of farm road, logging tracks, and mountain trails. Our aim? to get as far as possible between the Atlantic and the Pacific without driving on paved roads. 300 miles near the East Coast is no go, but from North Carolina to Oregon, motorcycles have made the crossing on what's called the Trans-America Trail. Never though, we believe, as a proper vehicle. To attempt the month-long journey, we have Land Rover's LR4. There's almost no country on the planet which Land Rover have not explored. For this trip, the LR4 is stock, with a few key dealer extras added for the remotest, toughest sections. From the start at Asheville in North Carolina, the Smoky Mountains and the back roads of Tennessee are our warm-up act. Then it's into the Deep South, where the idea for the Trans-America Trail was conceived. I had a dual sport bike, and I did not want to ride on the interstate. I did not want to ride on US highways, so I said, I'm gonna go out in the outback and find some gravel roads and make me a little loop. So I finished Mississippi, I got to Arkansas, and I said, hey, this is pretty good. I just kept on going until I got to the Pacific Ocean. And on here, Our Pathfinder is veteran adventurer, Tom T.C. Collins. From Madagascar to Montana, he's taken Land Rover's places where few other wheeled vehicles can go. His greatest task will be marrying Sam's maps with satellite navigation. This trip is not just about mud and maps. Going off the beaten track is the way to see less discovered parts of America. On our trail is Clarksdale, home of the Mississippi Delta Blues, and home to film star and blues club owner, Morgan Freeman. And we would say, I've never been to Mississippi. I said, well, you should come. Blues started out in cotton fields, and uh, people working in those cotton fields, they would sing, we call it Field Holler. We would see people in Clarksdale, tourists, and the universal question generally was, where can we hear some blues? So that's when we decided to build a blues club. Now this is the original Delta Blues. The blues gets in your soul, and we don't want to leave the heat and passion of Mississippi, but this is a mammoth trip. The Ozarks and the prairies lie before us. Ours is a journey twice the length of the Mother Road, Route 66, which we cross near Tulsa, Oklahoma. 110 years before us, the first car drove across the USA. It took Messrs. Jackson and Crocker 63 days. On dirt, of course. But I feel more of a symmetry with the pioneers and stagecoaches who opened up the West. The mighty Mississippi feels a world away. The natural barrier to our progress now is the towering Rocky Mountains. It's TC's home state. Good thing he knows the way. But one wheel wrong, and you're flying, not driving. We're at the approach to Black Bear Pass, approximately 12,800 feet. It's a pass that is terrifying to a lot of people. Huge drop-offs, K-turns on switchbacks with 1,000-foot drop-off.
we're out of Colorado and the Rocky Mountains, and now we're into the high desert of Utah. It's hotter, it's dustier, but it's just as dramatic. Crawling pace, we tackle Black Dragon Canyon. A few hundred feet away is I-70. In the same time it takes us to go 20 miles, we could reach Seattle, 800 miles away on the interstate. The desert is a place few animals and even fewer humans can endure. Outside Moab, we meet a man who has tunneled underground to survive the heat. This is the cave, living in the rock. About 68 to 72 year round. Doesn't matter what's going on outside. Plus, uh, the other thing is there is no maintenance on this house and the roof don't leak. It's our last state, and one we have in common with pioneers and the pioneering motorists of 1903. But we're not out of the woods yet. Fallen trees block our trail, but there is worse still to come. The forest is ablaze and the Trans-America Trail is in its path. The Pacific is no more than 50 miles away, but our exit to the ocean and trail end is an inferno. All those uh, pink areas, those are the fires that are immediately on our route. It adds a day of extra driving and dozens of miles of double backing to cover off the trail foot by foot, before breaking out onto the prehistoric beach near Port Orford in Oregon. We can go no further. Ahead is the Pacific Ocean. We are 4,375 miles from our start, and the same distance ahead is Tokyo, Japan. Mm -hmm. 